My name is Bill Strong. Um, I live in Santa Barbara, California with my wife, Victoria, and uh, our daughter, Gwendolyn, was born in 2007 and diagnosed with uh, spinal muscular atrophy type 1. We were told the kind of typical um, story from our neurologist that there's nothing we could do and uh, to take our daughter home and love her. And we found that actually there was a lot that we could be doing um, outside just um, you know, caring for our daughter and making sure she has a high quality of life. And so that's how I initially got involved. I reached out to Fight SMA and they um, immediately embraced us and uh, we've spent the last three years basically in close partnership with them, um, fighting on the hill and raising money for research and um, doing everything we can to uh, move the needle forward on, on all fronts for SMA. My career I've spent in technology and specifically in um, internet startup businesses. And uh, so I think I bring a kind of a fresh, new technology-based um, focus to the organization. The incredible thing about technology is that with very limited resources, if you're using it very effectively, you can actually, you can actually, you can have a really big impact very quickly. Um, and that's really the, the power of technology in my, and social media in my, in my mind is that, you know, you can have somebody who's you know, in Iceland feel like they're really part of an organization that's in Washington, D.C. and feel like, you know, it, it feel like they're part of a community. My wife and I started the Gwendolyn Strong Foundation uh, about three years ago. Uh, it's a nonprofit focused on SMA. One of the unique things that we've started actually this year is um, two things. One is an iPad grant program called Project Mariposa. And um, this year we're going to be granting at least 75 iPads to um, those with SMA. We've granted uh, 32 so far. Um, and these devices, the, the iPad, you know, literally opens the world for people with SMA. The other um, program that we started uh, is an iPad application, actually, that we built specifically for, for people with SMA. Uh, it's called Say Hi AAC, and it's a device or it's an app that allows um, people to communicate via the iPad without actually having to touch the iPad touchscreen. We built it because of needs of our daughter, really, because Gwendolyn is nonverbal and um, we need, we, she's four and a half years old, and if you think of SMA, it does not impact the mind. She's, you know, like any other four and a half year old, has a lot to say. We've had some great feedback from the SMA community. Um, we've had some great feedback from other disease communities as well. So at the ALS community, um, which is very similar to SMA, um, as well as severe stroke patients, um, and even some, um, some children with autism are using the app and finding it very useful. So we're uh, pretty proud of that one. My daughter uses eye gaze technology, which literally she can use her eyes to navigate a, um, or to look at where she wants to, to, to what she wants to say, or if she, you know we're doing a, a puzzle or something, she can actually use, almost use a computer with her eyes. The problem with eye gaze is it's not mobile; it's very clunky, so we can't take it to a restaurant with us. We can't take it to preschool with her. So we needed something that would allow us to be mobile, and that's why we built something very basic. Um, that would can go anywhere, and um, yeah, it's great. Uh, we we go to preschool with my daughter, and um, for the first time, she interrupted class using this app, say hi AAC, because you know she we were it was supposed to be a quiet time, and they were having snack, and um, she started navigating to the movies page and saying, you know, I want to watch Lion King, and I want to watch this, and all the kids were saying, I want to watch Lion King. It was pretty funny. We actually had to make changes to the app to control where she could go because we need, you know, we need the ability to, um, you know, not let her disrupt everything all the time, which is a good problem to have for, especially as a parent of a child with, who is nonverbal. Research of SMA doesn't only impact this disease. It's they kind of think of it as a gateway disease. Um, so they, they're, uh, there's a lot of research focus on SMA, but it also impacts a lot of other conditions as well. I feel like you know that's the future of SMA is to continue, do, continue doing what they've been doing the last 20 years, um, and you know just push push these push these the momentum forward, um, and hopefully get us to you know where we're you know. Um, not talking about no treatment, no cure, but there actually, you know, is something viable that we can do for for children or people that are diagnosed with the disease. And um, families like like uh, like mine aren't having conversations with neurologists of, you know, I'm sorry, there's nothing you can do. It's uh, it's a much different conversation with, um, um, you know, a, a much a much brighter outlook for the for the long term future for these kids and these people. I'm Bill Strong, and I'm fighting for hope. <laughs>